I'm an 18 year old male. Moved from my hometown in with my mom about a year ago, now into a farmhouse pretty much in the middle of nowhere on the east side of Australia. It was at the very end of a 7 kilometer long driveway that had like two other houses on it, both with elderly couples in them and a 30 minute drive from the nearest town, which is very small, only having about a thousand people living there. I'd feel really uncomfortable some nights when I was outside having a cigarette, the old feel like you're being watched, and occasionally would wake up and hear footsteps outside that I was sure did not sound like the sheep and rams that were right near our place. I have a history of drug abuse, and am quite a paranoid person because of it, so I tried to rationalize it all by telling myself I was just being paranoid. One night, I woke up at 3am and needed to take a piss, when I looked out my bedroom window and very briefly saw a flash of light like it had come off a torch or a phone. Seeing as though we lived in the middle of nowhere, this freaked me out a lot, and I stayed up until morning listening and looking out, but heard nothing. Maybe a week later, my stepdad's right on lawnmower has its tires slashed, which my stepdad blamed on me, but I didn't care because it just further enforced the idea that there was somebody lurking around our property. My mom knows I wouldn't do something like that, and instead thought that the neighbor had done it. I always chatted with the neighbor when I went for walks, and I liked him, and really doubted he would have done it, let alone be able to walk that far as he was quite old and if he came in a vehicle late at night, we would have heard it. Stepdad ended up moving out because, and I don't mean to get too personal, he's a drinker and I witnessed him on the verge of being violent with my mom, and intervened and messed him up a little bit. So he moved out the next day and we haven't seen him since, thankfully. And no, the things that happened after he was gone were 100% not him. It wasn't even considered to us that it could be him because it just wasn't, trust me. With him gone and it only being my mom and three-year-old sister there, and considering we can't legally own a gun in Australia, and the cops would take a good hour to get out to us if we needed them, I got increasingly paranoid about the things that had been going on because I felt I had to be protective. Some nights, I would stay up very late, and before going to sleep, would turn off all the lights and walk around silently looking out the windows for any signs. And sure enough, on a few occasions I would see torches way off in the distance in the middle of the cow paddocks. As if somebody saw all the lights turn off and started making their way over at 3am, which is weird to say in the least, considering that in every direction other than towards the other houses on our road, there was absolutely nothing but bush and paddocks for a good 20 kilometers. I should add that our front door didn't properly lock, and could easily be opened by just messing with the handle a bit, so I started putting a wheelbarrow up against the door and a metal sheet behind the wheelbarrow, so if the door opened it would make a very loud noise that would definitely wake me up. A few weeks went by and I saw and heard absolutely nothing, so I began to get much less paranoid and was thinking about it a lot less. One night, I had gotten back from the pub and was a bit drunk still on my phone in the lounge room. All the lights were off because mom and sis were asleep, and I was just laying there, texting whoever and listening to music. We have two cats, and on this night, they were frisky and running around wildly, so when I heard the metal sheet I had in front of the door slam on the ground, I figured it was just the cats and ignored it and walked straight past it to my room, maybe half an hour later, not even giving it a glance. The next morning my paranoia immediately came back in full swing, and I proceeded to freak out when I see that not only had the sheet fallen over, the door itself was ajar and wheelbarrow had moved a good 6 inches as well, which there's no way in hell either of my cats could have done. The only explanation I have for this is that somebody tried to let themselves in, heard the bang and ran off. A few nights after this, my mom woke up late, maybe 4am to ask me to come out to her car with her because all of her car lights were on and she didn't want to go out by herself. We went out and turned it all off and brought the keys, which we usually just leave in the car, back inside with us. The car battery was dead and we had to get our neighbor to come down with jumper cables the next day. She was certain she didn't leave any of the lights on, and all the doors were shut meaning somebody went inside, pressed the button on the roof put the key in the ignition on accessory, and exited and closed the door, with what we think was the intention of draining the battery. She began agreeing with me that somebody was lurking around the house and told me a few things she had noticed that she just didn't want to tell me because I was already anxious about it all and she didn't want to make it worse. 
like when the tank water started tasting funny and she found a dead, half-decomposed possum on the grate on top of the tank. She didn't mention how she couldn't possibly see how it could have ended up there unless it happened to die right there on the exact spot, and somehow didn't start making the water taste funny until it was so decomposed you could see its bones, and how a garden rock was moved in a weird position right outside her window as if somebody was using it to stand on to look inside. The house closest to the road had multiple dogs, and the one that I was friendly with who lived closer, maybe three kilometers from us, had a gun and often shot rabbits and foxes so that definitely makes us the easiest target. All of this made both of us very concerned and we ended up finding a house and moving about a month later. I know, this is anticlimactic, but it still freaks me out as I can't think of any other explanation other than that there was somebody lurking around our house for multiple months. There were many times where nobody was home all day, so if they wanted to steal from us, they easily could have come in and take all our stuff, but nothing was ever missing. Might just be overthinking it, but I truly think they had some very sinister intentions and were intentionally just messing with us. This happened last year, and it still gives me the creeps thinking about it. I was leaving work and was on my way to a friend's house. My work is on the literal edge of town. It's pretty rural and gets really dead at night. My friends live even further away from my work, in where I guess you'd consider to be the country area, and the roads get more and more desolate the closer you get to their house. I clocked out of work, went to my car and called my friend to talk to her on the phone about something, while I drove to her and her boyfriend's house. I looked both ways before I exited the parking lot, but there was absolutely nobody else on the road that I could see, which was a pretty good distance. I made it a mile or so down the road when I see headlights behind me and coming up fast. It was a full-sized pickup truck that had been lifted and he got so close to my car that all I could see out of my back window was the Chevy badge on his grill. I thought he wanted to pass me, so I waved out the window for him to pass using the suicide lane since the road was only two lanes there. Instead, he started laying on his horn. Mind you, I'm not a slow poke driver. I was already doing 55 and a 45, so it's not like I was inconveniencing him with my speed. I tell my friend what's happening and she tells me to just keep going and that he'll probably leave me alone eventually. He stays glued behind me for another mile or so, occasionally honking some more. Eventually, he started turning his brights on for a few seconds, and then he started slowing down until we were a couple hundred feet apart. And then he'd floor it to fly up behind me really fast like he was feigning to rear end me. I'm getting more sketched out at this point, and my friend is trying to calm me down and telling me to just keep driving. At this point, I'm really scared that he's going to hit me, and I wanted to get away, but there was no businesses open that late this far out of the city. In fact, there wasn't really any places to be open anymore, just fields and some houses every now and then. I decided to floor it and to try to outrun him, figuring my Corolla might not be Formula One car, but surely it's a hell of a lot quicker than an old pickup truck and I could get some distance. I got up to 85 and kept an eye on him, and he didn't seem to be trying to catch up. I felt a little safer and assumed he'd given up, so I dropped back down to like 60 and informed my friend that it worked and he was done. I still had tunnel vision from the adrenaline and I didn't realize he was flying up behind me again until he was barreling towards me, probably doing 85 or 90. I realized he wasn't slowing down, so I braced myself for the impact and told my friend he was about to rear end me. Instead, he cut around me, missing my car by inches and flew around in front of me. He cut right in front of my car and slammed on his brakes, trying to get me to rear end him instead. I was able to stop in time, and he started slowly continuing forward. He repeatedly stopped in the road for a few miles, almost like he was baiting me to pass. My friend told me that her boyfriend was on the phone with the police and was keeping them updated, and for me to stay on the phone with her as long as I could. After a while, I could see my friend's street sign, and she kept assuring me that her and her boyfriend were outside waiting for me to pull in, and that the cops were on the way. She told me to pull into the driveway and stay in the car until they were sure he was gone. He made what should have been a 10 second drive to the street a painstaking process because he kept stopping in front of me. The next part was really my fault. 
I instinctively turned on my blinker, which let him know I was about to turn onto the road, so he immediately whipped up the curb to cut in front of me again. My friend's house is on a corner, so her and her boyfriend were able to see everything now, but I had a bit of ways to go before I got into her driveway. The truck stayed put in the middle of the road this time, and he wasn't moving, so I tried to go around him. As soon as I started to pass him, he floored it and cut to the left, nearly hitting my front end and blocking the road completely. I was feeling braver now that I knew help was on the way, and my friends were there, so I laid on my horn, yelled some choice words, and told him to move his ass. My friend and her boyfriend had gotten to the edge of the property where we were by then, and I guess the driver took notice of them and slowly started moving out of my way. I pulled into her driveway as fast as I could and looked out the rearview mirror to see him slowly driving up to her driveway where he stopped. I couldn't see his facial features because it was so dark and he was kind of far away, but I could tell he was staring at me the whole time. My friends had gotten to my car just as he got to the driveway and I watched my friend approach the truck. I heard her say, You need to leave now. The cops are on their way. And they stared at each other for a few seconds before he slowly continued on. Her neighborhood is a giant loop and he never exited so we felt adventurous and sneaked around the block in search of where he went while we waited on the cops. We found the truck parked at a house and returned just as the police arrived. We told the cops where the truck was and the officer returned informing us that there was no answer at the door and he left. Her boyfriend, who had lived there forever, nor his mother, recognized the truck or the man and if I recall, his mother even knew the people who lived at the house the truck parked at. And as far as I'm aware, he wasn't seen again. Because I'm a very small female who was alone at almost midnight, we all assume he watched me leave work and was trying to bully me into wrecking my car so I would pull over and he could abduct me. We think once he realized the cops were involved, he parked the truck in someone's otherwise empty driveway and likely left it there to hide in a nearby field until the cops left the area. Hello, I've been working in this field for a few months now and I've seen some bizarre and weird things so I figured I'd share some of them in the hopes to clear my head. I work in a decently large hospital in the middle of nowhere in Pennsylvania. I mostly do work in the emergency room, but have also worked around the other floors of this hospital. Just the other night, a patient came in around 4 in the morning. It was an 18 year old female who her family found standing on the top of their shed in the middle of the night, and when her parents saw her and she screamed, she fell and broke her femur. She came into the ER, I was told by the nurse to check in on her whenever she was settled in her room, so when I did, I was a little shocked. She was still in a daze and her leg was torn to shreds. I could see it through the bandages. When I walked in, she just stared and didn't say a word. I was about to introduce myself when all of a sudden she lets out a scream. Not just any scream, it was a scream like of a wild animal caught in a bear trap. After this, the nurse ran in and she started yelling numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, but in random order. After this, she passed out and went unresponsive. She got moved up to one of the basic care floors, and that's all I know. I just wanted to tell some people because I found it a little bit odd. Three thirty a.m. Some random Tuesday in October. Sleeping soundly on my couch, I am awakened by a loud banging and screaming. Not just drunk people at 3.30 a.m. screaming, but that horrified, panic-filled, someone is fucking dying screaming. You know it if you've heard it. My eyes open and I immediately see a half-naked woman, covered in blood, banging on my door. Ripped button-down shirt, barely holding on, boobies flapping everywhere and panties. That's it. It's freaking October, in New England. It's cold as shit here. Anyways, she's banging on my door with both fists, screaming, Help me, help me, they're chasing me, they're going to get me, they're going to kill me, help me. For the most part, I'm dumb, but not completely. I'm not going to just open my door to some screaming bloodied up psycho. I hit my alarm and let it go off a bit, perhaps scare off whoever is chasing her. Then I do the only humane thing I can do in this situation. I let her in. I pull her into my home and close the door really quickly. Answer the call from the alarm company. Yes, send the police, send an ambulance, thank you for being real. 
I've never used my alarm before. It was nice to know they are actually real. Now I have this lady bleeding all over my living room and crying hysterically, repeating over and over they were animals, they were chasing me like animals. I can clearly hear she has an accent. I'm figuring Russian, Romanian. She is speaking broken English and is scared as hell. I take her into the kitchen and enter CSI mode. I'm thinking, yeah, I got this shit. I'm gonna not contaminate evidence and make sure I keep all the bloodied rags I used cleaner for the cops. All while she is still saying she was being chased by animals and all that. She is messed up. The side of her face is scratched up. Her arms are scraped. Her legs are all bloody with scrapes like she took a good fall. Just messed up and blood everywhere. So, scene setter. 3.30 a.m. Kitchen. Bloody half-naked, non-good English-speaking, hysterically messed up, bloody woman. Me collecting evidence. Me. It's okay. Calm down. The police are on their way with an ambulance. Psycho lady. They were chasing me like animals. Me. You're safe now. Let's get you cleaned up. Psycho lady. They were chasing me like animals. They were going to get me. Psycho lady again. They were chasing me. Then they turned into werewolves. Me thinking, oh fuck me. Psycho lady. They were chasing me and turned into werewolves in my eyes. Me. Now I'm scared. Calm down. You're safe here. I bring her back into the living room, and I'm scared. Many, many thoughts running through my head now. Am I gonna die tonight? Is she going to attack me? Why aren't the police here yet? I need a weapon and fast, but mostly, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, what the fuck, oh my god, oh my god, what the fuck, what the fuck, oh my god. She is bandaged but still rambling on and on about animals and chasing her and whatever. I decide it's probably a good idea to give 911 another call, just to be sure they know my address. It also allows me to get my couch in between me and her, affording me a little bit of safety. Not much, but I was confident in my run around the couch she'll never catch me skills. She is pacing my living room, rambling when she goes over to the window and starts staring. A good 10 second stare with a creepy silence attached to it. Then, Babies! There are babies in the road! Oh my god, look at all the babies in the road! Screaming at the top of her lungs. I'm not coming out from behind the couch. Let the babies in the road die. This goes on for a good 30 seconds. Not an imaginary 30 seconds where you think it's been like 5 minutes and it's really only been like 10 seconds. This was a full on 30 seconds of screaming and me standing behind my couch thinking, fuck you, I'm not falling for that trick. Finally the police come. The officer knocks on my door. I now have to leave the safety of the backside of my couch to unlock the door. I dashed my ass to that door and ran out and told the cops, she's nuts, be careful. They take her to the ambulance and do whatever they need to do to her. I'm chilling on my couch, shell shocked. I mean, what happened? The cops come back and ask me if I know her. She looks familiar, but I don't know her. Then he asks me if I was babysitting for her. I'm like, what? No, no, I'm not babysitting for her. The cop proceeds to say, oh, because she said you were babysitting her kids, and when she showed up to collect them, you wouldn't give them back. At this point, I'm exhausted and frog-eyed and throw my rights out the window and tell the cop to search my house that there are no kids here. The cops know it's a BS story she gave, but he had to ask anyhow. I understand that. He doesn't search my house. Ambulance takes her away. Cops leave. It's now 4 a.m. and I'm sitting on my couch knowing I'm never going to get back to sleep and the workday is going to suck. The best part of this story is what the police blotter said in the next day's paper. Resident lets woman claiming to be chased by werewolves into her home. Awesome. Just awesome. Turns out, I did know her. She was my neighbor. I arrive home from my suck-ass day to find the Department of Child and Families waiting outside my door. Come on, really? I now have to let her into my home because I, being the nosy person that I am, want to know what the deal is with the psycho woman. Contrary to what the police blotter said, I usually don't let people, sorry, people claiming to be werewolves into my home. I was willing to make the exception for the police the prior night because I was scared and fear can quickly remove quite a few boundaries. Anyhow, DCF woman informs me that Psycho woman was my neighbor. 
I knew she looked familiar, but I just couldn't place her face. Perhaps the blood and scrapes and psychotic behavior threw me off. There seems to be a missing child, or so Psycho Woman told them at the hospital. I'm starting to get a little freaked out, as Psycho Woman already accused me of not giving back her, what we thought, imaginary kids. The story I got from DCF was limited. She wouldn't divulge much information, but in a nutshell, what I did manage to get was this. Psycho Woman lives next door to me, the house to my right. We share a driveway. The house is a duplex, so people are always coming and going. I never paid much attention to anyone living there. Psycho Woman claims she has a child, a little girl, age unknown. Said child is missing. Psycho Woman was under the influence of mind-altering drugs. She was Romanian. That's it. The messed up thing is that I do remember seeing a child over there. A little girl, probably about four. I've only seen her one time, maybe twice in the three plus years Psycho Woman has lived there. Again, never paid too much attention to what went on over there. DCF questions me about everything from have I seen this lady before to why would Psycho Lady choose my door to bang on. I'm not especially paranoid, but I can recognize the potential for a situation to turn ugly very quickly. I tell DCF Lady that I have no clue who the fuck this woman is why she would choose to bang on my door, or where the psycho woman's alleged child is. Pretty much exactly like that. DCF lady ensures me that they don't think I'm involved, and that this is just a routine for them to follow up. DCF lady leaves. I'm pretending like I don't want anything to do with the situation, but honestly, my life is pretty boring. This is the most excitement I've had in months. Next day, four police cars, canine squad, five to six uniform cops, two plain clothes, show up at my neighbor's house. My nosy ass goes outside. Psycho woman's door is wide open and the fuzz is walking in and out and the canine unit is bringing in the dogs. The cop tells me the following story. I swear on all that is sacred, I am not making this up. It seems that upon entering the house, they found a mess, just dirty, dingy, and all around health hazard. The basement was wall to wall mattresses. The bathroom attached to the basement was just rank. It was a two-bedroom condo with the non-master bedroom wall-to-wall -wall mattresses. However, the master bedroom looked like a king's room. That's pretty much all I got out of the cops. I hung around and watched them drag all the mattresses out. It was pretty gross. Dirty piss stains and whatever else nastiness all over them. They took about three dressers, cheap Walmart types. Miscellaneous other crap, tables, chairs, couch, etc. Turns out this house is a Romanian immigrant sex trafficking operation. The owner of the house is bringing these Romanian girls over, providing housing, if you can call it housing, and selling them out for sex. Psycho Woman did have a kid, but it was taken away by DCF about six months prior. The Psycho Woman herself was, as far as they could tell, on a job using what they think was crank or meth. She freaked out all messed up and was running home when she must have fell several times and got all messed up. She, again what they think, hit the height of her paranoia upon reaching my door and then, well, the rest is history. Moral of the story, if you don't let crazy bloodied half-naked women into your home at 3.30 a.m., you will never find out that your neighbors are running a Romanian immigrant sex trafficking operation. This isn't necessarily the worst thing that could happen, but it still shook me up a bit. As a bit of a backstory, I'm from a really rural area and have recently moved to the city for university. I'd started to feel a bit homesick and missing the countryside, so I decided to go on a walk in the woods close to my accommodation. I live on the outskirts of my city. It was still night when I started my walk, about 2 p.m. With it being winter, it's been getting to be pitch black at about 4.30. After about an hour and a half of walking, I noticed that it was starting to get pretty dark, so I turned back because I didn't want to be in the forest I'd never been in before in total darkness, mainly in case I got lost. On my way back, I saw a guy in maybe his early 20s, obviously drunk with a plastic bag full of bottles of alcohol and muttering to himself. As I was on a path with steep slopes on either side, I was pretty much forced to walk past him, doing so with keeping as much distance as possible between myself and him and keeping my eyes focused straight ahead. As soon as I passed him, his muttering became much louder, 
and I was sure he was trying to talk to me, but it was still unintelligible, so I ignored him. Then I heard him yelling, and turned around to see him walking towards me. There was about 10 meters between us. I still couldn't make out what he was saying, but he was walking quickly towards me and eyeing me up and down with a really creepy look on his face. Not wanting to have any trouble, especially considering I'd only seen one other person quite a while beforehand, I simply said, nah, leave me alone. He clearly heard, as I saw him register my sentence through his drunken brain, yet he simply shook his head and carried on walking towards me. At this point, I panicked, pulled out my phone and shouted, I'll call the police. I knew this was an empty threat, considering the fact that I didn't even know the name of the forest and knew that it'd be a long time before the police would get to me, not to mention my phone was at 10% before I'd even left, and most of that had gone by taking photos. I guess in this case I was lucky he was drunk as he froze, put his hands up and mumbled, all right, before beginning to back away. I walked quickly away looking several times over my shoulder to check if he was following me. It's probably a good thing I did, seeing as each time I looked he was facing me, maybe to check to see if I would notice before he could get to me. Like I said, this could have been nothing and have simply been a harmless drunk guy that I blew out of proportion. Either way, next time I go for a walk I'm fully charging my phone and taking a kitchen knife with me.